In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. The family is a tiny society of individuals which is held together by bonds which exist because of matrimony and of natural generation. The family is obviously made by God since all of its constitutive elements <clears throat> are made by God. That man should be male and female that they should enter into a lifelong marriage, that they should bear children, and that they should rear these children. This tightly knit unit is not merely a conglomeration of people, like a pile of rocks, but is an ordered society in which there is authority, law, and obedience. The father and husband is the head of the family and the other members are subject to him and owe him obedience. It is the duty of the father to bring the family to its proper ends, both natural ends, such as sustenance, and supernatural ends, such as eternal life and everything that pertains thereto. What I have said about the family thus far pertains to the purely natural consideration of it. When we add to it the grace of redemption, this tiny unit of society is raised to a supernatural level and becomes a supernatural society, in that sense, a holy family. It is a supernatural society, first of all, because it is founded on the sacred bonds of the sacrament of matrimony. Our Lord raised the purely natural contract of marriage to the level of a sacrament. In doing this, he made the love between husband and wife, the image of his own love for the church. St. Paul is explicit about this in the epistle to the Ephesians. Second, because it is held principally together by the supernatural bonds of faith, hope, and charity whereas the natural family has only the bonds of natural generation and natural love which hold it together. The Catholic family has supernatural bonds which hold it together primarily. Certainly there are the bonds of natural love, but the principal bond is that of supernatural virtue. Third, because it has a natural end. The end or purpose of the Catholic family is not merely the natural good of the individuals in it, but the supernatural good. Consequently, the Catholic family is primarily concerned with the eternal salvation of its members and all that pertains thereto. In contrast to the Catholic family is the naturalistic family. When human beings who are called to a supernatural state purposely repudiate that supernatural state and their supernatural end, which is the beatific vision in heaven, and seek only natural ends, they become not merely natural, but naturalistic. <clears throat> By naturalistic, then, we mean the sinful repudiation of our supernatural life and our supernatural end. And this has been the constant theme of society ever actually since the Renaissance. For 500 years, this has been a pursuit of apostasy, whereby we return to paganism and the pursuit only of natural ends as if that is the happiness of man. There has been a, a gradual but constant repudiation of the supernatural ends of man. For nature naturally loves the elevation it receives from God to the supernatural order. It's like getting a promotion. Nature would rejoice at being raised to a supernatural level. But pride hates it and it stupidly attempts to enthrone nature as a god, 
That's exactly what the pagans did. The reason why they had all of their gods, the Greek and Romans and the Egyptians and so forth, had their gods was that they were worshiping nature and they enthroned nature, what they saw as great virtues, as gods. It's paganism. And paganism has come back to us today. Because human nature is wounded by original sin, it cannot, for very long, without grace, observe even the natural law. The history of man proves it. Without grace, he descends into savagery, debauchery, murder, dishonesty, and other enormities of sin, which we are witnessing in our present society, which was once Christian, once rooted in the Catholic faith, but which gradually fell away, what with the Reformation and with other events and calamities over the past five centuries. The naturalistic family is therefore the family of sin and is opposed to the Catholic family, which is the image of the Holy Family. The devil, in order to build up what St. Augustine calls the city of man, that is the, the organization of those who are opposed to Christ the Redeemer and Christ the King, must destroy the Catholic family and replace it with the family of sin. Why is this so? Because the family, more than any other agency, more than the church, more than good example, more than relatives, more than any other agency, communicates the faith, communicates discipline, communicates obedience to the commandments, more than any other influence upon the child. Every society, even those of animals, even those of insects, is concerned with its youth. If you disturb an anthill, you will see the ants come out with their eggs carrying their eggs, lest the youth be disturbed. Because all of the animal world is concerned about the preservation of the species. It's always the species that must go on. And that's God-given. So also human beings want the youth to be imbued with the morals, culture, and ways of society. The animals rely on instinct placed in them by God, just the, in the way that a, a computer is programmed. But human beings rely on their intellects in order to transmit behavior and knowledge. Consequently, the construction of the city of man, this organization of naturalism, requires the cultivation of the naturalistic and sinful family. And this is what has been done little by little to families which in the past observed at least the natural law, had natural decency. All of that has been destroyed, especially after World War I and more especially after World War II. And we have seen over the past 50 or 75 years a downhill slide of morals in society to the point that it is something completely out of control. And this is all happening in families. And much of it is due to attitudes, of course, but also the media, which promotes the destruction of the family and the, the love of pornography and everything else that uh, offends even natural decency. <clears throat> Society is merely a reflection a, a magnification of the family. As bricks are used to build a building, so society is built with family units. The morality of society, its attitudes, its faith or lack of faith, its virtues or its vices, 
its good laws or bad laws are merely a reflection of its families. Satan's ultimate goal is to undo the redemption of Christ. For while he is conquered by the blood of Christ once and for all on Calvary, there is still left open to him the fact that some men will, through pride, turn away from the Savior and love sin. It is true that our, la our Lord made perfect satisfaction, infinite satisfaction on the cross, conquered the devil in as much as we were given the possibility of freeing ourselves from him. But it is the work of the church to apply redemption to every single soul since the time of Christ until the end of the world. Just as it is not enough to have food in a can, you must have a way of opening it and eating it. And so also the redemption of Christ, the merits of Christ, must be applied. And this is the work of priests and the work of the church. But you are free through a defect of free will, actually, to reject everything that the church offers and the church teaches and to embrace hell. You have, unfortunately, the freedom to do that. In heaven, you will no longer have that freedom because of the beatific vision. But here, in this testing place of our love of God, we have that possibility. And so the devil works constantly to detract from the glory of God by winning over souls to himself. Because the way in which God is glorified in this life is by the sanctification of your soul. And the way in which Satan has revenge upon this terrible act in his eyes of the redemption of the human race, the way he takes his redemption is by drawing souls to himself. His revenge, therefore, is to prevent the effect of the redemption by turning men away from the Redeemer and their supernatural ends. The destruction of the Catholic family, or even of the observance of natural virtues, is therefore one of the primary goals of Satan, and he has been very successful, especially in the past 50 to 75 years. So whereas the Catholic family is held together by supernatural bonds of faith and charity, the natural family, the naturalistic family, is held together by purely natural bonds of love. And this is why it breaks up so often. Because human love, no matter how strong it should be, is nearly always alloyed with selfishness. And for that reason, it is not as strong as divine love. It is fickle, it is weak. And that's why there is the roving eye toward another woman or another man because of the selfishness that lies in us and which tempers and weakens the natural bonds of matrimony. This is why divorce comes, because we are selfish whereas the supernatural bonds hold us together much more strongly because by nature they are as strong as the, the love of the sacred heart of Jesus. By nature, that is, if they become perfect, which has no alloy of self-love. But that is the charity that is infused into our souls. And so the supernatural bonds of the family are much stronger and whereas the Catholic family is oriented toward a supernatural end, the naturalistic family is ordered toward a merely natural end, which is the enjoyment of life as much as possible. Whereas the catchword of the Catholic family is merit, the catchword of the naturalistic family is enjoy. Whereas the Catholic family has a supernatural means by which to attain the supernatural end, which is the Holy Cross, the naturalistic family makes use of created, perishable, and temporal goods, even vile goods, 
to achieve its ends, and these are typically money, impurity, gluttony, entertainments, and self-fulfillment. Whereas the Catholic family is ordered under the authority of the Father, who is an image of God the Father, the naturalistic family is a conglomeration of individuals living in the same house with no authority recognized in anyone, at least in the practical order. Wives are disrespectful and disobedient to their husbands. Children are disrespectful and disobedient to their parents. They answer back. They have no discipline. They do not understand what is their, their, their purpose and, and obligation. And whereas <clears throat> in the Catholic family, the children are raised in the Catholic faith for the purpose of attaining eternal salvation, in the naturalistic family, they are raised in naturalistic creeds, such as evolutionism, which is by its very nature atheistic. And that is taught in the public schools, drilled into these young people. Evolutionism, which denies God the creator. If you deny God the creator, you deny religion. It is the first principle of all religion, is that we are made by God. And also hedonism, which is to say that if it's pleasurable, it's good. That is the one measure of goodness is pleasure. That's hedonism. And it is very, very strong in today's society. Whereas the Catholic family, in the Catholic family, marriage is indissoluble and the burdens of marriage and the crosses must be borne patiently. In the naturalistic family, marriage is dissoluble and should be dissolved so that life can be enjoyed more. Why stay with a difficult spouse when you can leave and get somebody else? Enjoy life, end it, end the marriage. And now in the Novus Ordo, those people who have done this dastardly act against the sacrament of matrimony are invited to the communion rail to receive what they call Holy Communion or to stand up and receive it in their hands, which is an absolute violation of all Catholic discipline and implicitly of Catholic doctrine, for either they are saying there's nothing wrong with adultery or they are saying it is it is permitted to receive the Holy Eucharist in the state of mortal sin. Either way, they are acting and speaking against all Catholic doctrine and all Catholic practice. But that is the Novus Ordo. And whereas in the Catholic family there is no abortion and no artificial birth control, since these are against the law of God, in the naturalistic family there is abortion and artificial birth control galore. Novus Ordo Catholics of childbearing age practice artificial birth control as if it were nothing. Something like 85% of them believe that is perfectly all right, and they practice it, you can tell, usually by how many children are in the family. Not always, because sometimes there are natural difficulties in having children. But when you see a pattern of people who call themselves Catholics and have only two children, whereas in the 1950s or the 1940s they would have eight children, you start to wonder about what they're doing. And legitimately so, because the Novus Ordo, despite whatever it says officially, blesses artificial birth control and permits it. And they all know that all the Catholics, that what they call Catholics, are practicing it, but they say nothing, do nothing. <clears throat> <clears throat> and whereas in the Catholic family, unnatural vice is considered to be gravely sinful. In the naturalistic family, dominated by hedonism, these unnatural vices are accepted and even praised. Why? Because of hedonism. If it's pleasurable, then go ahead. That's the only law, pleasure. And if it's pleasurable for you, 
then you should do that. They don't believe in anything else but pleasure. And therefore, the Catholic family and the naturalistic family are pitted one against the other. Two different societies, like the city of God and the city of man. The family of God, the family of man. And in our society, nearly all families have been corrupted by the devil and adhere to the naturalistic and sinful family plan. Consequently, there is tremendous pressure from naturalistic and pagan relatives to conform our Catholic families to naturalistic norms. You are under this pressure all the time and you must absolutely resist it. Otherwise, you will go down the drain to hell just like everyone else. So many parents come to us when they're in their middle years or later years and say, all of my children have gone astray. What did I do wrong? And in many cases, what they did wrong was to compromise with these naturalistic principles in their families giving their children bad example and letting the devil essentially into the door of their homes. That's what they did wrong. And, there's, and it's too late at that point. The only thing they can do for their children now is pray for them. Pray that God in his mercy will one day restore them to repentance and the faith. Now, that's not true in every case. You could raise a family with, with all of the right virtues and all of the right discipline and your children may go astray what what you are judged on is what you do not what they do because they have free will they can choose the wrong path as they will they can expose themselves to evil friends and evil influences they are on their own the question is from god what did you do did you do anything wrong to influence them in the wrong direction? So it's not necessarily true that if someone goes astray, well, then there must be something wrong with the family. That's not necessarily true. But many times it is true that they do not learn from the home what they should. This pressure comes in the form first of acceptance of divorce and remarriage, including the fake annulments of the Novus Ordo. Second, it comes in the acceptance of loss of faith or grave public sin among the members of the family. People living in adultery. Three, the acceptance of artificial birth control or abortion for the promotion of the natural ends of children in such a way that they displace the supernatural ends. There are some people, even we have seen traditional Catholics, skip mass on Sunday in order to bring their children to swimming meets or soccer practices, etc., so that their children can have the complete self-fulfillment and the parents having self-fulfillment too, watching their children, applauding their children become stars in some sports event. That is naturalism. That is from the devil. Sunday is the Lord's day. The whole day is the Lord's day. 24 hours of Sunday is the Lord's day. When I was growing up, you couldn't buy anything on Sunday. And you could hear a pin drop in the street because people were observing the Lord's day. I don't have to tell you what it's now, what it is now. But that, that's what I mean by seeking natural ends over supernatural ends. Desiring the success of the child over his eternal salvation. And this from families who are otherwise pious. But they're infected by what I am talking about today. The greatest difficulty which the priest faces today is to eliminate the influence of naturalism in Catholic families. 
Many times our Catholic schools have little effect, at least on some students, because the families are so imbued with naturalistic principles and culture of discipline and order and respect that they really do not desire Catholic training and discipline for their children. They want the naturalistic approach. They want disrespect. They do not want obedience. And the Catholic school can do nothing for them because they are going home and relearning every single day what will bring them to hell. Catholics must understand that the family is the most efficacious teacher of children. It is the atmosphere of the home that will mold your child for the rest of his life. More than a school, more than a sermon, more than the good example of priests or nuns or yourselves as parents or grandparents, the family is the principal influence upon the faith and virtues of the child. It is the school of all of those things. And parents should understand the grave obligation of making the home a school of Catholic faith, discipline, and piety, and not an outpost of Satan's revenge upon Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.